Hello, I'm Dr. Sharita Golden, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for Johns Hopkins Medicine. We created this educational series for you on the COVID-19 vaccine because we want you, our employees, to be able to make the most informed decisions for yourselves. We have gathered experts across our organization to contribute to this video series, and we welcome you to watch either the entire series or just those components that are most relevant to you. Thank you. So who's going to get these vaccines once the vaccines are, um, are the emergency authorizations given? We're going to have a shortage of vaccine for many months. So as um, both Damani and Kathleen have mentioned before, it's important to keep wearing masks and do social distancing and washing our hands on a regular basis until we um, have a majority of our population vaccinated and the, the pandemic is under control. So. In, in anticipation of these vaccines, there were several groups that came up with um, equitable and ethical guidelines for the allocation of COVID vaccines. Um, the National Academy of Science, Engineering and Medicine came up with a framework um, that was conducted by experts um, for the allocation and they came up with their own guidelines. Um, the, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices um, which is part of the CDC, but it's an expert panel that advises the CDC on outside, sorry, not part of the CDC, it's an outside expert panel that advises the CDC on vaccine recommendations, the use, the use of vaccines. Um, they came up with their own ethical guidelines in November. And um, this advisory committee on immunization practices is what gets, is on, on a national level, who gets to decide what the priority groups are, but each state actually will make their own determination um, based on their priorities of who should get the vaccine. Um, the ACIP came up with a um, sort of three-stage approach to um, priority groups for vaccines. They met on November 23rd and voted on this priority grouping on December 1st. They're actually going to meet again on December uh, today, December 11th, and then again next week um, to discuss the any uh, any authorization of um, future vaccines. Um, so the first priority group um, is two. It's healthcare workers and long-term care facility residents. Healthcare workers because they're more likely to be working with COVID patients. Um, and also more uh, to prevent transmission um, of decreased transmission of COVID um, and long-term care facility residents because they have been particularly hard hit by um, COVID-19 and are more like and um, residents and workers and are more likely to um, die from this infection. Um, so these these two groups will be the first priority group. Um, after that. The CDC, the ACIP has prioritized essential workers, um, which are everybody from grocery store workers to bus drivers to um, uh, people who, um, sanitation workers, um, people who work in jails, et cetera. And um, this was really, this is because they have jobs that doesn't, don't allow them to stay home and work from home, but also as an equity issue. Um, as both Damani and Kathleen have mentioned, essential workers tend to be um, more um, African-American and more Hispanic than, or, or Latinx than the, um, than the average US population. And this allows, these workers who have been particularly hit by COVID-19 and are more likely to be hospitalized and to die from this infection to receive the vaccine in a prioritized manner. Um, this is also true of healthcare workers. There's a, and healthcare workers is an incredibly broad area from the people from not just doctors, nurses, techs, but also um, people who work in housekeeping and, and custodial, um, people who work in um, labs in the health in the in hospitals, people who um, are caregivers. So it's a very broad category. Try to trying to capture those who are most at risk for infection. Um, the last prioritized group is, are the older adults. Apologize for the typo and people with underlying conditions that put them at high risk for severe COVID nineteen. 
teen illness. Um, older adults are 53 million and um, people with underlying conditions such as diabetes or obesity or hypertension um, are estimated to be about 100 million. And the CDC is hoping that we will have enough vaccine to vaccinate these um, priority groups within the next four or so months, um, which, is, which is not to say that not, we're not all going to get vaccinated in the next week, but we're hoping to, that vaccines get rolled out as quickly as possible and are distributed as equitably as possible so that those who are at the highest risk are protected. 